no matter where you at in life, no matter who it is, I don't care what they say, everybody has financial goals in their life. You know, some people want to be rich. Some people want to be wealthy. Uh, you even get those people to say, I don't want to be rich. You know, I just want to be comfortable. <laughs> you know, Alex you probably heard heard people say that. The truth is, when people say that, they're they're really just screwing themselves over and saying, well, I don't ever think I want to be rich. I just want to be able to spend more money than I can on stuff that I want to do. But no matter what, everybody's goal is to have more than what they want now. So today, we're just going to talk about strategies that, you know, me and Alex have and what we did through the process of going through this. And these strategies can work for the everyday person. We're not doing nothing that you need a PhD for. We're not doing nothing that you need uh, 50,000 hours and some master class in. This is stuff that's rudimentary that we do every day. And this is how we built the networks that we have. So with all that being said, Alex, just give me some mindset about the strategy, a strategy that you use or your thought process on the strategies that you use. So the biggest thing for me and one that I like, it's always like, it feels like a burden trying to like explain it to people that like come to me and want to know how to do it is like, I can never tell if they're going to be as committed to it as you have to be because many people want to dabble in financial success like they want it, but they don't want to go full into it. And you have to like, I think that's the only that's really like the only as, aside from diversifying asset classes. But that's the only thing that like the biggest strategy is just you got to do it like sacrificing those vacations giving up on those birthday gifts those holiday gifts you know getting rid of the stuff that's truly not necessary and has no true value but is just created value by society not worrying about what other people think not worrying about what your parents think not worrying about what anybody thinks and aside from that too if you're in a relationship being with the right person and if you're not with the right person having the uh the courage to uh leave that person and a lot of people can't do that so when you say the right person what do you mean by the right person so by the right person to me is someone that is truly supporting you not someone that is just a cheerleader and says oh yeah i support you you know i'm, I'm always here like no someone that you know, let's say my wife, for example, she is someone that gave up doing her hair, didn't do her nails. She was someone that was willing to not do the holidays or not worry about the birthdays or the anniversaries because she knew that we had a bigger picture to go after. And so those were just things that, you know, I through the path started to see, look, you know, this is extra expense, you know, this, this is going to cost extra money. If we can sacrifice these things, we can achieve great things. And she saw the full picture and she was on board completely. Um, I would even argue, you know, she does have her own job. She has her own income from her own personal business that she's building. But even aside from that, if she had no income coming in, just the support alone, and being able to make those sacrifices that alone i think would save people money and cut those expenses that need to be cut to go after it if they're in a one income household right um one thing that one thing that uh you omit is and i think it's huge and i don't think you omitted it on purpose one thing is huge is you said she has her own job she has her own business. She has her own money. But it's not a his, hers thing. It's not, oh, it's my money. It's your money. And it's not support just saying, hey, Alex, I support you. Go ahead and invest your money. Hey, Alex, I support you. Go ahead and buy the real estate. Like you said, she's not just a cheerleader on the sidelines. She's taking her money, combining it with the, well, the money that she makes with the money that you make and 
you're collectively investing in different avenues across the spectrum. So a lot of people, and I hear this all the time, oh yeah, I support him. And I say, what do you do? You know, when he, when he tell me he want to do something, I say, go for it. All right. So that's not support. That's just, anybody can say that. My mama can say that. Are you actually right. putting money into it? That's real support. That's real commitment. That's real sacrifice. Yeah. You know, just saying, just saying it like, hey, Alex, you can go ahead and do what you want to do. But, oh, but I'm going to go over here and go hang out with the girls, hot girl summer. And then Alex is doing his thing. She's and that's why all I, in just like you are. Exactly. And I don't mean to cut you off, but that's why I say like, if it is going to be a one income household, because I know some people have it that way and they prefer it that way. If it is going to be that way and they have no money to put into it, then put blood and sweat into it. You know, put that sacrifice into it. It's going to hurt. I mean, most girls, and I'm not trying to like women shame right now, but they can't go without doing their nails, doing their hair. Those are not necessary. They're not necessities. Those are luxuries. And I think in this society, we we have attached luxuries to this idea of being a necessity. And it's not it's not a hygiene care. No, those are just that's just something you just want to do because you want to look pretty. And, you know, my wife coming from a third world country to her, just being able to eat you're good you're winning you know so as long as we were eating you know she was like okay she's like whatever here here's here's this money here's that and it just all went to investing and that's the only thing it's going to take for people is don't buy the don't buy the newer used car buy the old junker use the junker just go straight to work come back home you know prep your your food at home and don't be trying to get on this huge health binge and trying to buy the expensive food and all that until you actually have some money. You know, so many people, they want to take care of their health. Like I mentioned in a previous video, I was eating ramen. I was eating, you know, bologna sandwiches, like just cheap food. Like, cause that I needed to do that to get the money to invest until I built those extra incomes. And if you're in that lower income Part, you have to do that if you're in a lower income phase is what I meant to say because most people yeah they're not starting off with a six-figure salary but you have to just go fully committed and uh Gary V uh says this but you have to learn how to eat crap basically you know you just have to do it until you're actually making some wins and then from there yeah you can have some luxuries but that's that doesn't come until later on right and yeah so at like like we said this you don't need a phd to do this i mean anybody anywhere like you know i've said many a times you know i started off with two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt and to get out of that two hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt i didn't go to debt collection companies i didn't go call and beg people can i push the payment back what i did was i cut my expenses you know, that was the genesis of how it, how it gets there. I mean, you always hear live on less than you make. I know people tired of hearing that. And then the people that hear live on less than you make, they come up with an excuse. But those are just, you know, the building blocks. And Alex, on the next video, you know, that'll come out tomorrow, we can talk about exactly what do we mean by live on less than you make and, you know, different things that we actually went through. Could be kind of funny because I know you probably got some stuff out there that you did that's I think is absolutely crazy. Um, but from my end, uh, on the investment side, like I said, again, you don't need a master class, you don't need to watch you know 50 million uh hours of videos on YouTube. I mean, could it help? Yeah, but my investment strategy is very simple be a contrarian, don't follow the crowd. And what I mean by that is I want to be where the money is not, but the money is going there. I'm, you know, I want to be able to, I use the word, look around the corner. Um, for instance, I have the motto, if it's already in the news, you're too late. I also have the motto of everybody's talking about it. It's the wrong thing to do. So for instance, I'm not, you know, I'm not signing off and blessing off on cryptocurrency. Um, before people knew what Bitcoin was, I was buying Bitcoin. 
then people that never invested in a thing in their life started coming up to me and saying, hey, what about this Bitcoin thing? This is, of course, years later. They're saying, what's this Bitcoin thing? What is this Bitcoin thing? Everybody in the office is talking about Bitcoin. And my advice to them, and I said it to them, was, do you know what Bitcoin is? And they would say, no, I just heard it make money. Everybody's talking about it. And then that gave me the first inkling of, okay, this thing is going to go on a run. And then I'm going to be exiting. But you don't want to be there. Because now the price of Bitcoin is shooting up and everybody's chasing it up. Everybody's chasing it up. And then I'll never forget it. Um, I flew into Texas. And then I think it was December time. I forget what year. And then something just was something just was like wake up. It was like two o'clock in the morning. Bitcoin then went from, you know, like three thousand to like nineteen thousand a coin. And then I just rolled over because I got an alert on my phone. I rolled over, and then I just sold my coins. And then this is when it went to twenty thousand. It came back down to like five thousand or something like that. And then when nobody's talking about Bitcoin again, I started buying it. And then of course we had the the COVID run in it. But that's where I want to be, a straight contrarian to what everybody else is doing, just like in the stock market. I don't want to, you know, the hot stocks or the mean stocks or all that stuff. Everybody's talking about it. I don't jump in there. And Alex, you remember, everybody was talking about the meme stocks in the class. And I was like, no, I don't want a part of it. I just was looking at them like, no, because everybody's talking about them. And, of course, the meme stocks itself was no value at all. It was just price action moving, price action moving. And I'm more of a medium to long-term holder. So that wouldn't work for me. But while everybody was focused on the meme stock, it was opportunities other places. So I put my money in, in there where it was other opportunities in other spaces. And then when the whole meme stock craze went away, then everybody came back to those stocks that was undervalued and then lifted my value up. And then that's what I do in everything in life is just be a contrarian, but on the investment side, that's the best way to be. So it's a lot of stocks right now that are undervalued because people are looking another way. I focus on those stocks and I just keep putting money in those, keep putting money in those, and then I just let it fly from there. Yeah, that is a great point because a lot of the stocks that no one talks about are the ones that are always performing. Those boring index funds, the boring single stocks, the big banks, the, you know, stocks like that. It's stocks that people don't want to be in because they want to go in the gambling route. And that's not the way to take. And I mean, the, the, that contrarian point is very good. And I mean, back to like, you know, what I was saying with just sacrificing stuff. Like I see people that just aren't fully committed. They just want to they want to keep their lifestyle, but they want to. Oh, maybe I'll just put in, you know, some money every week in stocks and it'll make it. But if you could cut out the stuff that you're used to doing every single day. You can put in more money. You can go more aggressive. You can build more wealth for yourself. And I go to the extreme. Like, I think, I because I, I understand we are so privileged in this country and outside of the country. I think of what those people do not have and try to think, okay, if this is normal in this society, then it's a luxury to these other countries. And I think that mindset will make you more grateful. I mean, people that are celebrating birthdays and holidays while they're poor and broke, like that's a luxury in itself. You're literally celebrating a day that has no actual value. You guys are just making something up, wearing ugly sweaters to this Christmas party. Like you're just making stuff up and you're celebrating that. That itself is a luxury. I mean, you're just doing something for no reason. Um if you're ordering more than off the five dollar menu that's a luxury <laughs> i mean there's so many things that people do not see like there's we're this society is just filled with luxuries and people take everything for granted and they don't see it's just a money pit you're just losing so much money putting your money into things that society tells you you need to put your money to and you don't realize that is what is holding you back and i think that would go co hand with what you're saying the contrarian aspect because if you're following the crowd you're going to be broke yeah and it's and to sum it up like what alex said if you literally be focused be dedicated stop always taking advantage of all the luxuries and using that capital to invest 
in the boring stuff nobody's talking about. Don't follow the crowd. You know, invest in the S and P five hundred, um, SPY. <clears throat> Invest in index funds. And then if you do that for a period of time, we're not saying live your whole life like that. If you do that for a period of time. Now, just to remind, you know, people that haven't watched the channel, I was $250,000 in debt at the age of 28. My net worth was, I want to say around 600, 600, 700,000 about time I was 34. And then it just ballooned from there. But I mean, I still order off the five dollar menu because I just like it so in there. But <laughs> I mean, I also I also order sushi that would uh make Warren Buffett cry. So it's not forever, it's not a forever thing, it's just a small time in a window. And then once you realize, once you go through those sacrifices and realize you don't need or you don't, yeah, you don't need as much as you want. And you see the returns that you're getting for putting your money in alternative places, you will start realizing the value of money. And then you won't be as quick to just offload money on every little whim and every little idea that your broke friends give you. And that right there is how you get financial success. And for those people that just, you know, want to be comfortable, you know. You know, they don't want to be rich for those people that want to be rich or people that want to be ultra rich. Those are the starting block tools to do it. Is there more you can do to multiply it after you get the, the building blocks, the base level stuff done? Yeah. But first, you have to get the base level. I don't care if you listen to Dave Ramsey. I don't care if it's Robert Kiyosaki, Grant Cardone or any other people that talk about how to make money. The building blocks is sacrifice. And then be in places where the money is going to. Those two things right there will get you to where you want to go. But the thing is, you have to do it. So this PhD class is over with. And you see, you only took you 10 minutes. And it's not a lot of stuff involved. It's just up to you to do the work and take the action. With all that being said, guys, if you have any comments, let us know down below. If you got any questions, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.